Percy the Park Keeper, one springy day. Welcome to Percy's Park. Percy the Park Keeper works hard looking after the park and his animal friends who live there, but Percy still likes to find time for some fun and games. And of course, in Percy's Park, there's always time for a story. One springy day. 1970, 98, 99, Percy the Park Keeper counted, 100, coming, ready or not. Percy's animal friends were ready, all except one. Oh dear, said the fox, where, where shall I hide? I can see you, hedgehog, called Percy, found you. The fox stood by the door to Percy's workshop. Oh dear, Percy said not to go in here, but, 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 Percy called again. He was getting closer. Three rabbits in my wheelbarrow. Found you, he said. This was too much for the fox. He put his paws over his ears and slipped through the workshop doorway. There must be somewhere to hide in here, he muttered. He stopped by some tall shelves and looked up. I wonder. The fox began to climb the shelves like a ladder. It was a bit tricky, and it became trickier still when he got his foot tangled up in an old spring. He took his leg, but the spring stayed put. He shook his leg harder and harder. The shells began to sway. Get off! The fox moaned. Percy's coming, I need to... Oh! Crash! The shells tipped forward and emptied everything on them, including the fox, onto the floor. The fox wasn't hurt something wasn't right. He felt sticky, very, very sticky. What was that noise? said a voice outside. Oh no, it's Percy. The fox jumped to his feet and bundled himself into a nearby cupboard just in time. Is somebody in here? Percy walked into the workshop, followed by all the other animals. He looked at the fallen shelves. Oh my goodness, what a mess. Everything's covered in my very sticky glue. Look, said the hedgehog. He pointed to a line of footprints across the floor leading to the cupboard where Percy kept things he needed for his work. Slowly, Percy opened the cupboard door. There was no sign of the fox. Fox, Percy called softly. Are you in there? There was a pause. No, said the fox. The other animals giggled. Then who can it be, said Percy. Don't know the fox. It's definitely not me. Percy chuckled. Come on, out you come. To everyone's amazement, not only did the fox step out of the cupboard, but so did everything else, all at once, all stuck together. Whoa, said Percy. The animals began to laugh. They laughed and laughed. Only the fox didn't think it was funny. With one foot stuck in the troublesome spring and the others in a paint pot, he ran from the workshop Clomp, boing, 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 clomp, boing, boing. Fox called Percy, come back. The animals looked at each other. Oh dear, said Percy, I think he's upset. Outside the fox was nowhere to be seen. We need a search party, said the owl. No need for that. Look there, said the squirrel. It's a trail of clues left by the fox. Well done, said Percy. Listen, said one of the rabbits. Everyone stood quite still. Clomp, bang, clomp, bang, boing, clomp, bang. Oh, said Percy, we'll soon find him. And remember, when we do, no laughing. With the rabbits racing ahead, Percy and his friends followed his trail, collecting up all the clues in Percy's wheelbarrow. Phew, I needed a breather. Percy sat down on the roots of an ancient hollow tree. Two ran it, rabbits ran up to him. The trail's run out. We can't find any more clues. Oh, that's a nuisance, said Percy. It'll be harder to find the fox now. He could be... Boing! Ooh. Percy stopped. The boing sound seemed to come from the inside of the tree. Percy smiled and signalled for everyone to keep quiet. Shh. Hello, fox, he said. There was no reply. Percy went on. Would you like to come out now? 
can't, said the fox. Stuck. Everyone tried very hard not to laugh. Let's give you a hand then, said Percy. He reached into the hollow tree and found not the fox, but the hand of a bucket. He gave a tug. Goodness, you really are stuck. Right, come on everyone, this calls for some teamwork. Percy and the animals tied at ropes and strings to the bucket handle and other bits and pieces that were, stick that were stuck to Fox's fur. They tugged and they pulled again and again, but still the, um, the fox stuck, stayed stuck. The badger whispered to Percy, I think it's his bottom. His bottom, said Percy. What's the matter with his bottom? It's stuck to the tree, said the badger. The badger picked up a mop from Percy's wheelbarrow and went to the other side of the tree. I've got an idea. When I say go, give it one more heave. The badger gently pushed the mop through the slit in the tree trunk. What's that? said a muffled voice. Who's pokey my? Take the strain, called Percy. Ready, badger? Go, shouted the badger. Percy and the animals gave a mighty heave and the badger pushed the mop as hard as he could. With a boing and a howl, the fox came free. Fox flying out of hollow tree, called Cock. Um, Percy called, found you. Bump. The fox landed with a heap in front of Percy. He tried to get up, wobbled and sat down again. Oh my word, said Percy, look at your fur. You need a warm, soapy bath. The fox didn't look happy. And afterwards, Percy went on. We'll all have tea. I've got a treacle tart and we can share. Not for me, thanks, said the fox. I've had enough sticky stuff for one day. Percy chuckled. Never mind, he said. Tomorrow will be another, will be another fine spring day. Please, said the fox, don't mention springs. Boing. The end.